Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Beautiful big fish. You know, a lot of people are intimidated by big water. We've had lots of comments on our show. You know, people are pretty comfortable in a creek, in smaller rivers, but when you hit a large river like the Columbia River or the Skeena or other rivers, they get intimidated by the water. So today, we're going to talk a lot about techniques you use on bigger rivers. And when we come back, I'm also going to show you this fish. So that's today. So we take a sport fishing on the floor. Oh, look at that. That's that's a long fish just coming off the, you know, it's in July and we're using, uh, I'll show everybody where we're using. There's a small little, small little pheasant tail. It imitates, you know, caddis mergers, mayfly mergers, which we have right now. But here's the, the rainbow. It's a beautiful, he's going to get big. So he's just bulking up. There he is there. You know, he's just bulking up. He's quite long, but he's fairly thin right now. So we'll let him go goes there off he goes so what we expect today is a variety of different fishing so this time of year july or any big water like this you've got back eddies and whenever you get back eddies that's where all the food piles up and the fish tend to feed in the back eddies you'll also hit runs so we'll show you some run fishing of course you get dry fly you know in these any like the missouri the columbia any these big waters you get tricos you get mayflies of all different types you get caddis hatches huge, you even get big stones. But you know, it's, a, it's always difficult because everybody wonders where to fish. Well, what we're doing, we're starting with indicators. So we have our dry lines, we've got our trusty bobber, you know, we've got our swivel there, and we're just using again small attractor patterns in the holes. Now, these holes, like you will see on bigger rivers, are anywhere from 20 feet up to 80 feet deep. Like they're huge, but the fish pile up here to feed. When they do pile up here to feed, when they come up, again, a great thing to use, hang your nymph down probably anywhere from six to eight feet, and you can have some phenomenal success. We have fish rising out here right now. We know they're, they're up, coming up top to feed. So we're gonna start off by targeting on little nymphs with indicators. <laughs> Big head shaker, another nice one. Oh, healthy bro, healthy bro. Right on top, look at him there, whoa. Down there dancing away, whoa, nice fish. And again, we're still, still working the nymph. So what I have here is a 10 foot rod. So whenever I'm indicator fishing, especially in lakes and rivers, I like a longer rod, because you have to open up the loops. Told you on many shows. So the ideal setup is 
really is key to the leader size. So well, I'm using actually a nine foot leader because I don't want to go too deep. And I've extended a few, a couple of feet on my swivel, you know, probably around two and a half to three feet down to my nymph. And I always use a swivel. And what we found sometimes, and not that this matters, but sometimes I've got a, a fairly big copper swivel to keep it down there. Sometimes we found silver works better. Uh, you don't know about the different sizes. Sometimes the size of the swivel matters. Sometimes it's got to be a little bit bigger and heavier to hold it down in the current. Sometimes they want it up top. So there he is there. So you got to try the different uh, size swivels. And there's that nice, oh, oh man, healthy bow. Wow. And again, we're going to uh, we're going to go to the bench and tie up some of these. We've already tied up this pattern or similar to it. Saw a pheasant tail. Little black bead, it's a great, you know, great pattern, little pheasant tail jig pattern that we use. But I'll show everybody this fish. Look at this, this is, this is nice and full. So, you know, probably close to 18 to 20 inches, a 24 inch net. It's probably, yeah, 18, look at that. Just gorgeous, just coming, again, bulking up. We got some real fat chromers, I'll let this guy go. There he goes there, swings back down the bottom to feed again. So we're gonna get a variety. You know, we'll have some smaller fish, some bigger guys on the nymphs. Normally we tend to get the bigger fish on the nymphs. We will get some dry fillet a little bit later, we'll show you. And again, you can float down and fish the banks for, you know, the smaller 12 to 16 inch fish and in bigger rivers. But when you target the big fish, they're always in the deeper holes for sure. And those faster water runs, just that's where you have to locate them. But you know what? We're having good luck with a nymph. I know the bulldogs lost a couple. He's, uh, he snapped a couple off and lost a couple, but it's time. It's coming on. We're battling the weather. The weather is a little crazy today. Beautiful. And look at right on the right on the edge. Little fly is out. I'll hold this guy up for everybody. Another big rainbow. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. That is again, you know, 18 to 20 inches. Just beautiful. And always keep them in the net. See how you keep them in the net so they don't fall out. So I'll let them go. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna give them a little net release. You know, a lot of times we'll hold them up, but sometimes. It's really good just to put them in the net, point them, drop your net, and there he goes. Oh, another beautiful fish. So as I was mentioning, one big thing you have to be aware of on big systems is all the different hatches. So what happens out here is in smaller systems like creeks, you might have a green drake hatch and it's just, it's limited. You've got one fly, that's where they're eating or pale morning duns, whatever it is. These big systems, you know, if you look at the foam lines, it's got spent caddis, they've got spent mayflies, we've got adult caddis, we've got what people refer to as little termites, they're actually a small little black, uh, it's not a mayfly, we don't even know what it is, I'm going to have to have Brian Chan have a look, but it's just a small little fly. These fish will be full of everything. So you've got to continue to try different patterns, you know. Last night, Dale and I were using a size 20 dry fly to get some fish. Later on, the caddis came off, we're able to go to a size 14 carpet caddis. It's perfect. So again, be aware of your hatches on big systems because they will change. And of course, don't be afraid, even big fish will take small patterns. And you know what I'm gonna do right now? Let's go to the bench. I'm gonna tie you up Dawn's pheasant tail jig. Again, one of my favorite patterns out here. I use multiple colored beads, but this is one of my favorites. So let's go to the bench, tie you one of these up. Today on the bench, I want to tie you up Dawn's pheasant tail nymph. Great little pattern, so make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use an H400BL size 12 jig hook, some 12 watt floral red thread to tie with, a 764 inch slotted brown bead for the bead, some natural pheasant tail for the tail, some natural pheasant tail for the body, some medium March brown wire for the rib, 
and some olive Arizona semi seal for the head. So to start the fly off, I've actually put my slotted bead onto the jig hook and you have to buy these special beads, the slotted beads where, so you can actually get them onto the hook for one thing and get them up close to the eyelet, small and always small hole towards the front when you put the slotted bead on. Take your thread and just wrap in a small little bit to start. Then take about, only take about three strands of your pheasant tail. There's your pheasant tail. I've only taken three to four strands max. You don't want too much. And what I'm going to do is take my thread and just wrap it back to the rear of the hook. I'm going to measure up the tail and I want it fairly small, just the length of the body. Take it back and just lightly wrap it in there. Take your thread forward and leave all this material, extra material on there. We're going to wrap that in for the body after. So what we're going to do is take that extra pheasant tail now and just pull it back and wrap over it, going back towards the, the tail and the hook bend. Now we're going to take our medium March brown wire and brown works, black works, but I've really found this March brown wire works the best. Wrap it in and just keep it off the back that will rid in the body a little later. Now that we have the rib tied in, I'm going to take some of my halco pliers, hook it onto my pheasant tail. Just spin it a couple of times. Just spin it, and that just makes it a little tougher. And we're just going to wrap it forward to form the body. And wrap it right up to the bead. Now that we have the body tied in, you'll notice if you only use a few strands of the pheasant tail, the body stays nice and thin. That's the way we want it. Now just take our, our wire off the back and wrap the opposite direction and form about you know, three, probably about five to six wraps up and tie off behind the bead. Now that we have the rib all tied in, we're finished right behind the bead. Take a small amount of dubbing. Now, not a lot of dubbing, just a small pinch in between your fingers and just dub it onto your, dub it onto your thread. And just enough to take a couple of wraps. I'm gonna take my whip finisher and I like to whip finish just a nice little hot spot on the fly. So take about you know five or six good whip finishes, tie it off, and you form a nice little hot spot on the fly. So there it is, Dawn's Pheasant Tail Nymph Jig Style. And again, you could tie this on a normal hook. It works just as fine on a normal hook as it does on the jig. But make sure you have some in your box. Well, there's another one on the nymph. You know, it's uh, it's around four in the afternoon. Normally we get, on bigger rivers like this, you get really good indicator fishing, you know, anywhere from early morning, usually trecos, like early morning, 6.30 in the morning, seven in the morning. Of course, I've never, me and Dale, we're never up that early. So we usually get on the water around 10, 10.30, have the indicator fishing, you know, up until about four. We normally have good fish until now, four, 4.30 until the dries start coming off. Dries are not coming up yet, and we still have a few fish feeding. So we're gonna to continue to work the nymphs for a while. But what we found, a little trick is a, a little tweak. So what I've been doing is casting my, uh, my indicator into those nice little swirls where all the feed is. Usually they like it on a dead drift. You keep it just floating through those seams. But ever since I've just started putting a little tweak, tweak on the fly, so just a, just a little, ever so slight twitch every time I see a fish go by there they grab it oh there 
Dang, that tough part of the lip. Okay, I'll hold this guy up. Another chrome bullet. I'll get him with this head. This time, move that out of the way. There's another beautiful Columbia River rainbow. You know, and that's what you're going to get when you're uh, when you're fishing big waters. You know, everywhere we've gone, where we fish big streams. Of course, I'm talking, you know, the Bull River and bigger. So, anything in the 10,000, you know, CFS, we got pr pretty good flows of Columbia, 40 to 60,000. You know, it's cubic feet per meter. There, it's going. There's a lot of volume pushing through the system, but. So whenever you get that, you got big fish, and they're just, they're really starting to key on both the indicator or the nymphs and the dry. So we're going to pay attention now. If we start seeing more caddis coming off, we will definitely switch over to the dry. And also, you got to look the way the fish rise. If the fish are kind of, all you see is the back and the tail. They're feeding on emergers. They're feeding on nymphs and other things on the top and down below. If you start seeing their heads coming up and you actually see pretty splashy rises, then they're coming up for dry. So something to be aware of. Splashy rise, normally dry, a nice sip or a nice back motion, they're feeding on nymphs. But I'm getting that nymph out there again. I'm in the back of the boat, the bulldog grilled me to the back. So we'll see if we can get some more. Wow, they're up on the dry. Oh, that's a nice fish too. Oof. Oh. Yeah, popped it in there. I told you if we seen it, it was going to be a, it was going to be a, uh, it was going to be. My fish for sure. Nothing really started to rise yet, but we decided to randomly put it out there. We saw some caddis on the water. We knew they were gonna come on. And he sucked her down. He's having a better, better experience on the dry than he had on the nymph. <laughs> I had my share of problems with the hook set. But you know, that's, that's the other thing. When we were fishing dry flies the other night, I had a 12 foot leader, you had a 15 foot leader. And the difference it made was unbelievable. You just couldn't get that extra two seconds of float. It made all the difference in the world. You had to have a longer leader. Yeah, I had a good night. I yeah, exactly night. same fly. But it was just that three, remember I wouldn't switch. I was no, too stubborn. I said, stubborn. can't be. It can't be. And then when I did, he was successful. I'll show you where he's hooked. Oh, it's out already. It fell up. It's loose there. Nice little fish. Beautiful. On the dry fly, they're always yeah. lots of fun. Let him go. Oof. Come on. Yeah. And this is your kind of special tie caddis, too. A little carpet caddis, but carpet I tied this. Carpet caddis. Right. Yeah. A little carpet caddis there. Yeah. Yeah, I just tie it with, uh, I just like to splay it out. Don't like the trailing no. shock. No, you want Really small. And you spread. Spread, yeah. I like to splay it right out. Splay it yeah. out like a spent caddis yeah, once exactly. it lays on the water. Yeah. yeah perfect. Well, get some Good. more. Good. That was like the <laughs> second cast. All right. <laughs> he has new hope. <laughs> After <laughs> the fiasco <laughs> nymphing. He had some break offs. And He's breathing good. Oh, he's starting to. There he goes. Oh. Oh. 
I made up, he's been having the rough day to this point. <laughs> then there's this little slick, impossible to catch them. Three feet of water, they're sipping out of the little foam on the edge. Don says, not a whole pin heck. I went in there, put on the long leader, a little emerger, and he ate it. Wow, what emerger, let's see it. A little caddis let's emerger. Let's see it. Well, they're eating those little teeny caddis, but. And there's the pod right there, there's the pocket. Little tiny pocket. Off to the edge with no current. Yeah. There he is there, right? Caddis emerging. Little guy. Little bead head on him. Yeah, that little emerging caddis. Just like that. Little bead head on him. He's kind of falling apart even. Yeah. Right <laughs> Probably not, gives him the realistic right look. Right in that little pocket. Wow. That little pocket I mean, right impossible. back there. Oh, you know, that was a pretty decent day. You <laughs> surprised me. Day. <laughs> well, day. So we go into our traditional holes, trying to show everybody how to fish big water, right? You got the big back eddies, doing the nymphing like we normally do, waiting for dry fly. And then we find some weird places where you pick them oh, off. Oh, yeah. Well, you did great with the nymph. I yeah. just, I couldn't. I broke a couple <laughs> off, lost yeah. them with the nymph. And then yeah. I said, well, wait for the dry fly. Yeah. But we stumbled into that little, little pocket. Pie. It was fantastic. Yeah, the you little pulled up the little pie. nymph. I didn't think, there's no way. I said, there's no way you're going to catch them in there. And you picked them off. Picked Pretty them sweet. off in there. Yeah, it went up. We got some walleye. Had walleye yeah. for lunch. Yeah, it was fantastic. On the full sink line. Yeah. And then down now some dry fly this evening, right? We've had yeah. picked off quite a few on dry flies. Yeah. And we'll finish up in this hole. Ah, Too dark we'll, to yeah. film. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But we'll get some good dry fly action here. And you're going to thank uh, a few people. Yes, I definitely yeah. want to thank the Prestige Mountain Inn in Rosland. Great accommodations. Great restaurant there as well. Yeah. And they put us up this week. And also previously with the with the girls when they were here as well. That's so right. It was great. Pretty pretty nice. Yeah. But you know what? I hope everybody learned something today on uh, you know approaching big rivers. When you're on the big river, though, take care because it's big water. Conserve our waters. We'll see you next time. We'll take the sport fishing on the <laughs>